Hi, I'm Ken Morgan, and I'm somewhere in the inlands of Thailand on an organic coconut plantation. We're looking at a good portion of the 800 acres from up on the hill. It's a beautiful place. The owners are going to take us on a tour and tell us about what they've created here. So how long ago did you start the farm here? 25 years ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this was a completely uh, forest area. Mm. I mean, uh, we have the land title deed, but also uh, most of the area are still not in use. A lot of big trees, we need bulldozers, so we need a lot of uh, heavy equipment to clear the land. But the land we acquired by that time was so cheap, so it made it worthwhile. Mm. Do you have a name for the farm? Chalahan. <laughs> Chalahan. Chalahan Company. <laughs> <laughs> so when you first moved here, this was just grassland? Grassland and partly uh, forest. Partly forest. forest? Yes. Okay. They used to grow cassava or tapioca on this land. Mm. And the soil quality was so poor because they all washed away. There's actually only sandy loam and no topsoil. And when we first started the plantation, we do put some fertilizer, trying to put to to make the coconut grow better. Then uh, pretty soon we found out that it doesn't work so much because in this big area we need a lot of fertilizer, and fertilizer have to keep going every year. We start a new theory because the soil recover itself when we let the nature take care of them. Pretty soon we found out that it's worked better, really. That's great. The modern culture, like in the West, where they put all kinds of chemicals into the soil, you have, just like a human body, you have to artificially feed them every day but if you let the nature take care of this themselves first you do not have the toxic of the chemical you put into the soil you put into the plant secondly you save a lot of money and save the environment simultaneously my former plant Plantation uh, supervisor used to clear all of the trees on these two hills and try to claim the land for planting area. But I told them to leave them alone because it doesn't work because uh, it's very difficult in the rainy season to have farm tractor coming up here. Mm -hmm. So pretty soon the forest just recover themselves we do not have to replant them. We do not have to put more trees on them. Nature will take care of itself. And this showed us that the theory is true. Most of the local trees are growing up as fast as they are destroyed, really. And then you have bush tree, which is a little bit taller. This is a second family in the rainforest structure. Wait, so the first family is the loam? The, the, the grass. The grass, okay. Yes. And then you have, you have the bush or the, the taller grass or, or even leaves, plants, smaller, just like this. Mm -hmm. And that you have the other one that clings to it. Vining plants. Yes. And then you have the trees. Mm -hmm. So if you have to put these three kinds of, at least three to four kinds of plants in one area, because it cover and uh, are mutual ben benefit to each other. 
Big trees alone cannot survive in the rainforest because the soil is bare. Pretty soon the erosion will destroy the topsoil and the tree cannot stand and no moisture, no food, no uh, nutrition to feed them. The small roots of grasses keep the soil loose and also keep moisture in the soil because of the least of the grass. So how uh, do you control erosion here? We just let the good weed growing. Mm -hmm. They will cover up the soil and leave them not as naked soil. But when the weeds are there, there will be less erosion or almost practically nothing. And this is the law of nature. And then the water goes down into the... Yes, on certain area when, you know, just like uh, the hilly part, which is hard to uh, use the machine for, <coughs> for uh, harvesting or planting, we just leave the rainforest grow as they are. This rainforest will uh, accumulate the moisture in the rainy season and through seepage it will moist up the land below in the valley in the dry in the dry season so that we can strong we can stand longer drought. Makes and, a lot of sense. Yes. And and this is also very good for bushfire because we always observe that certain dense rainforests, even bushfire occur, occur or happen in, in, in some occasion, it's very difficult, almost automatically dried up by themselves. Because the leaves are green, it cannot burn very easily. Before we used to have a lot of bushfire around here, now we are right in the middle of the dry season. You can see how large it is in this area. Even the wheat, which has shallow or poor root system, are very green. Do you have mushrooms growing in this soil? We have all kinds of mushrooms in the rainy season, edible also. So I guess that'd be part of the ecosystem in the soil. Yes. If you do not have mushroom, mm then it's not good because mushroom is part of the rainforest. There are certain kind of mushroom that will help uh, rotten yeah. the leaves and, and you know something like this. It's part of the decomposition, decomposition process. That's right. right. So when the, the palm fronds are dry, you just cut them down and compost them and then put them back in the soil, right? Mm -hmm. Great. So you have a, your knowledge of all this is, is, is becoming lost. Actually, I'm a mechanical engineer. I have no idea, never studied plant <laughs> agriculture, but just learning by observation and books. <laughs> and of course, in order to save money, if you have big area, you put fertilizer, chemical into this area, you, you, uh, you might be able, to, you might not be able to survive mm. with the poor income. Cashew nuts. Cashew nuts. <coughs> That's great. And what do you do with the cashew nuts? Sell them to the processor. They de de shell them and then uh, sell them as uh, finished nuts. Most of the shell are cracked by hand, one by one. Wow! <laughs> really labor intensive. <laughs> My name is Subida Sharon Wong. So, yeah, I'm the daughter of the owner. And as a second generation, I love this place. It's I think it's a symbol of, you know, balance of nature. That's it.